We're in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin for an extraordinary behind the scenes tour of the primary Mercury production facility. We're gonna see propellers being made. We're gonna see engines being cast. There's a huge 4,500 ton press. Let's go take a peek. We were invited to Fond du Lac because Mercury has invested significantly in this manufacturing facility to meet the demand of the consumer. Building the latest lightweight V6 and V8 outboard engines is no easy task, and it all starts with casting. Mercury is home to some of the most powerful die cast presses in the world. This is a die from that monstrous 4,500 ton press, and it's used for V6 and V8 outboards. And if you can believe it, there are more parts in that die than there are in the average power head. Now the benefits of such high pressure is an incredibly dense and yet lightweight casting. And that is how Mercury gets these V6 and V8 outboards to be so light and yet maintain all that durability. A uh, die cast machine is, in essence, a large hydraulic press. We scoop the molten aluminum up with a ladle, pour it in a large tube. A piston pushes that molten aluminum through the tube up between the two die halves. It holds it on pressure for a short amount of time. There's water lines that are plumbed inside the die. The water lines are activated, so it accelerates the cooling process. So molten aluminum goes from liquid state to a solid state in a matter of seconds. A robot goes and grabs the casting, and basically it's ready for an exit conveyor. Various component castings are formed using this same process. Once cool, unwanted elements from the molding process are cut away, collected, and recycled. Having the foundry on site allows the scraps to get reduced back to molten aluminum. There is virtually no waste during this process. We're one of the lucky people in the industry where we have a foundry on site in the United States that's 100% clean. We control the quality of the metal. We want to make sure it's the right content that's going to hold up for corrosion. If an outboard engine has 1,000 pieces, for an example, 687 of those pieces are built in-house. Special steel cylinder sleeves are pressed into the newly formed blocks. We've brought a lot more robotics in that help control the quality. It makes it easy for the associate to assemble the engine. So we're bringing in more Mazak cutters, and that's the actual tool where the actual component goes in and we do the machining on. We're close to almost 300 of these cutters. They're going to work around the clock to increase capacity. But going robotics, what we're doing is kind of more like we cut the part, then we check it. Let's just say that position took 20 people. Now it only takes three. Now we can move those people back on the line to help with assembly or other sections. Mercury has an incredibly sophisticated corrosion protection system. And for most of the outboards, it's a two-part process that starts with what they call chrome conversion. And after, it goes through an EDP process, which is electro-deposition painting. It's a really sophisticated version of powder coating. And about 85% of all outboard parts go through this two-step process. A secondary benefit of this EDP process is that the paint's not used. The stuff that's in the air that doesn't get applied can be reused. Unlike a liquid system, once you spray it, it's basically junk. And they actually go through this system three times for the maximum finish durability and UV protection. After a variety of treatments, the engine blocks and other components head towards assembly. Since 2008, we've invested over $1.1 billion in our manufacturing footprint. And that's really been driven by amazing investment in our products. And clearly, to make those kind of products, we need to invest in how we manufacture them. We have many, many more women working today in the plant than we used to. And part of that's been enabled by the systems we've put in. Heavy engines are hard to move from station to station. So we have a lot of aided lifting and maneuvering of those engines, which enable a much broader workforce to be able to safely work in our plant. The employee engagement we have across Mercury is amazing. We couldn't do what we do without every single employee in this building. It's really our intention to define the industry, and that's part of the benefit we get now being 100% marine focused. After the assembly process, every engine is run through what's called a hot test to ensure everything is functioning as it should. Our design of our hot test is unique to our product. So we're looking at making sure that we understand the braking of the engine, what's the RPMs we need to run that engine to verify the oil pressure, temperatures, making sure the electrical system works correctly inside that engine before we pass it on to the customer. 
So the engine, when it comes in the hot test tank, is going to lower down into a tank of water, just like it's sitting in the lake to run the engine. We're hooking everything onto it from a throttle control, fuel itself to run through the engine. I'm looking for water pickup, water pressure, oil temperature. There's a hood that comes down. It's a very visual management system. So the operators got a recipe that they do not touch. It automatically runs based on that model that's coming in there. Runs through the test. After it finishes the test, the hood itself will turn a green color. Let them know that it's passed the test. It's a good engine going out to the customer. It'll turn red if there's a defect in that engine. Make sure it cannot go out to the customer. And it stops that engine from going to the final operations. It'll send it into a repair bank. Countless hours of research and design go into each and every engine. Later in the show, we see just how far Mercury has gone to make their engines as quiet as possible. We will also see what steps are involved in manufacturing propellers. Back in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin at Mercury Manufacturing, hours of R&D go into making a marine engine. But one element you might not think gets much attention is noise vibration and harshness, also known as NVH. During the recent plant expansion, Mercury developed a building entirely dedicated to measuring NVH in their engines. And this is the hemi anechoic chamber, really the heart of the NVH facility. Here, you can mount an outboard or a stern drive engine up to 500 horsepower. And if you've heard just how quiet those new V6 and V8 engines are, the start of it all is right here. We're constantly trying to go after the best data we can. And the only way to do that is eliminate all those uh, external influences. We partnered with a great engineering firm and they helped us through this process. It's actually two buildings within a building when you look at the two chambers. The chambers themselves are constructed to eliminate a lot of groundborne vibration. The tank in the ground holds about 66,000 gallons of water. The concrete floor in the building built on top of the floor is actually floating on uh, 42 springs. When we were in the midst of uh, developing one of our outboards, our product engineers, because the quietness of the room, actually heard a whistle. Probably not something you generally hear at the dock. It took us a while to figure out what it was, but it turned out that it was actually the wind from the flywheel creating a vortice across the crank position sensor. And we actually redesigned the shape of the crank position sensor so that it eliminates that whistle. It is a unique tool set for us, and in order for us to maintain our, our advantage in the NBH side of the business, uh, we feel it's necessary to continue that investment. And uh, we're happy to see that they support that idea. Next on tour was the Mercury Propeller Factory. They are so good at what they do that they not only manufacture propellers for Mercury outboard and inboard outboard engines, they also make propellers for other leading engine manufacturers as well. Market share for stainless steel propellers worldwide, Mercury is a dominant player in the uh, outboard and stern drive marketplace with class leading market share for our products which is really driven by number one, the fantastic engine products. We get to benefit from that, but we also benefit from the performance that we bring to the table such that our products not only used on Mercury products, but for customers who run competitive product from Yamaha, BRP, Suzuki, know that if they want to get the best performance out of their boat, they run a Mercury propeller on their boat. So what we're talking about today is called investment casting, also referred to as lost wax casting. We actually start with a tool, 140 degree molten wax is actually injected into that die to create a wax copy of the propeller. And then the product goes through a series of sequential dips. Then we invest a shell around the wax pattern. The first dip is called a prime dip with a very fine grain sand because you want the very smooth surface finish. Subsequent dips is a more coarse sand because those are all about strength has to go through a 24-hour dry period. Then the propeller is de-waxed, so the prop's upside down, wax drains out, and then you have a shell ready to receive 3,000-degree stainless steel. And what you get then is a, a casting that looks something like this in the raw state. And then it goes through a two-stage blasting process, one to blast out the interior of the uh, propeller, and the other to blast the oxides off of the uh, surface of the prop. You get a surface finish that looks like this. Next step then is a machining operation on what's called the labyrinth seal. That area is machined because you want a precise interface with the engine so that it keeps exhaust gas traveling through the hub just like you want it. Then from there, the, the propeller gets a full grind. And then the last step is uh, what we call media finish or drag finish. And then from there, the uh, prop gets washed, gets inspected for any last defects. Finally, it'll get mated with the hub kit put in the box. And there you have it. The Bravo 1 has been fully polished. While our tour of the facilities was coming to an end, several things were made perfectly clear. 
Mercury has listened to their engines, literally, and they have expanded their facilities to meet market demand. Making their own components puts them in the driver's seat of their production both now and into the future.